In last week's episode, we cruised between some of the Gulf Islands in Canada. We visited Salt Spring Island, Prevost Island and then Sydney on Vancouver Island. What are we doing now? We're picking up a new stove. Oven. <gasps> it's gonna be so nice. We've been waiting all day. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's why we came here to Sydney. Because uh, we ordered a new stove through uh, our follower Benoit, who has a ship chandra here. So we ordered it yesterday and uh, it came today. So now we're heading to shore. They have, I think we go to their own, they have a small dinghy dock uh, next to the store. And we pick it up there. I hope it fits. We've been measuring and measuring <laughs> and it should fit. <laughs> drop off a bag of clothes that we don't use anymore for donation, trying to minimize and help others in need. The stove had arrived in one piece, so now we just needed to get it out to the boat. Yeah, another project for the boat. This will be fun. Or what do you say, Malin? Yes! <laughs> You're a bit tired of the old one, right? Yeah, a little bit. Well, as am I. This will be really good. The reasons why we are changing our stove now for a new one and the oven is because this is falling apart. It's 31 years old, so it's the original one. And this top part is loose. The burners are loose. And uh, like the hatch here for the oven is really bad. So it's not possible to close it entirely. So when you use the oven, it's leaking out hot air here. And so it's gonna be really nice now to change and make an upgrade. As always, when starting a new project on a boat, it turns out to be more work than expected. Ugh. Yeah, need to do some cleaning here, that's for sure. Yeah. It took quite some time just to remove the old stove. And then we found out that it was too big to fit between the handle and the wall. Oh. 
Well, I'm sure we've been having it out there. No. No, we haven't. I'm pretty sure we have. <gasps> To get the rusty stove out, we had to dismantle it, which proved impossible without using force. Well, there is always something extra when you're doing this stuff. And now the whole bottom here under the, underneath the stove it just collapsed. So we need to glue that back. Of course, the new stove was too big as well. So we had to remove all parts that we could to get it into the galley. Yeah, it took a bit longer than I expected to get this installed. Like always. <laughs> yeah. And then of course, there was one uh, pipe on the back side of the stove that was interfering with the gimbal function here so I had to fix that and, but now it's now it's there and it wasn't very easy to just take out the old stove no we had to, to get I it mean out I don't know here <laughs> yeah. and here so we actually we had to break the old stove apart to get it out actually Approved. <laughs> so nice. Oh, this will make a big difference. What's this in the bottom? Oh, it's to, to lock the gimbal function. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, let's make some food. I'm so hungry. <laughs> yeah, me too. We brought the old stove ashore and left it for recycling. Bye-bye, uh... stove! <laughs> 31 years old of... 31 years of cooking! <laughs> it is so... it's so thick! Oh, the whole thing here was super... Yeah. It's, really it's, thick clay. You can call it uh, glue. Okay, now we're drifting. Yeah. Whoop. With a muddy anchor, we motored the three nautical miles out to Sydney Island. Most of Sydney Island is privately owned. But the northern part, also called Sydney Spit, is a national park. There are 21 mooring boys, and during the summer months a small ferry goes between the Spit and Sydney. difference just to be able to control the, the burners on the old stove which was only on or, on or off This is Sydney Spit or Sydney Island and here we're standing on the spit 
which is just a little bit visible when it's high tide. But now it's low tide, so we have more. There is a bigger shore now. So this is Canada, but just over there, the islands you see over there are the United States. It's uh, one of the islands of San Juan Islands. So these two island groups, the Gulf Islands and the San Juan Islands, are so close to each other. It's like I think it's only seven miles or even less, five to seven miles, like from here to those islands. And that's where we're heading after we visit Victoria. We'll check out from Canada and then go to Friday Harbor in San Juan uh, and check into the United States again. The Spit is a popular visiting spot for birds. And during spring and fall, the Spit is often crowded with migrating shorebirds. We've been so lucky with the weather the last week. I mean, it's the 12th of October today. And today we've been having around 18 degrees Celsius. So I don't know if that's common this time of the year, but... Another nice thing with sailing this late in the season is that you have a lot of the anchorages all by yourself. Here in Sandy Spit there is only four boats today. And I can only guess, but I guess that in the summer it's a lot more. You never get tired of watching your floating home from a beach. This beach here reminds us quite a lot of, of um, the beaches where we're from, southern part of Sweden, Junghus and Falsterbo, Skanal. It's the same type of grass that we see over there, and I love beaches. Sunny evening turned into a sunny morning. It's a lot of current over here. We just altered course a little bit so we don't go into that. Um, so now we're just on this point here of Vancouver Island. I guess it's the southeast uh, point. We left City Spit this morning and uh, we thought we were gonna sail. Should be northerly winds, but it wasn't. Uh, we have motor the whole way. And we just got so surprised to see this whole mountain range. And um, well, on this other side here of, the, of this, I think it's called Strait of Juan de Fuca. It's uh, Washington, US and really high mountains. Snow on the mountain tops. It's the Olympic mountains we're seeing that stretches along the coast of the Olympic Peninsula. Quite big tide rips here. Right now we have around three knots of current. Luckily it's uh, in the same direction as we're going, so not a problem. So I guess it can be pretty nasty here if you have uh, southwesterly winds coming in here. That's quite some speed, huh?
Vi kan ta er mamma. I don't think they know how much weight they do. Nice lighthouse. It's a secret dream of mine to be a light keeper at some desolate island lighthouse. This is pretty close to what I'm dreaming of. I guess there can be pretty bad storms here in the winter. Some big waves crashing onto the rock and you're sitting there in your lighthouse keeping watch. There are four public marinas belonging to the port of Victoria, and we moored in the inner harbor at Wharf Street. Victoria is the capital of the Canadian province British Columbia, and one of the oldest hotels in town is the French chateauesque style Fairmont Empress. It opened in 1908. And here you can enjoy an afternoon tea for measly $78 per person. The city is one of the oldest in the Pacific Northwest. And the British settlement began here in 1843. These are the different states in Canada. And in the middle you can see the British flag. So there's very much British influences here in Canada. You can especially see a lot on the architecture in this here in Victoria. A lot of the old buildings have a very like European British style. The Parliament buildings are built in a neo-baroque architecture, a style that many buildings in the city shares. Uh, Victoria is a really neat town. It uh, reminds us a lot about uh, towns in Europe actually. How it's built up with the city center and yeah, just have a different feel to it. It's a really nice place. We have the marina in the middle of the city, really close to the yeah, downtown area. Which is nice for us because a lot of towns or cities we come to it can be really far to walk. But here it's a bit more, uh, yeah, everything is close by, so it's really nice. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a like and a comment. We read all comments and try to answer as many as we can. Thank you so much for all the support.